from last Sunday. It's kind of a kind of a, an overflow from last Sunday, and uh, I'm gonna tell you, I believe it's God's will for you to flourish. I believe it. I don't believe it's God's will for you to barely get by. I don't believe that's God's will. I believe it's God's will for you to flourish. And, uh, you know, we don't have things from God. Uh, uh, you have what you preach. You have what you preach. There's a hole in the church because we preach holiness. There's a worshiping church because we preach worship. There's a praying church because we preach prayer. And if you don't preach faith, you won't have it. Now, if you come in here to be, if you're settled for doom and gloom and things are bad and they're going to get worse, well, that's what's going to happen. Well, praise God. You know, years ago now, I, I know why I got where I'm going, but I, I, these things are over here. Faith brings the promises of God to you, and fear can bring your problems to you. You don't believe it? You know all them troubles that Job had. Do we know the first chapter of Job? You know all them troubles that Job had? You know what Job said? The thing I greatly fear has come upon me. So fear produces just like faith produces. But Paul said God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. God don't want you crazy. Some of us need a little help in that area. I'm going to read this scripture to start off with, okay? Then I got a lot of places to go. So will you stand with me? Oh, somebody got me some water. Thank the Lord. Did Brother Obed do that? Well, Brother Obed's doing better. This revival really helped Brother Obed. I, I'm going to have to send... I'm going to have to send Brother Bone an extra offering. I've been working on them years. Ain't done my liquor good, praise God. <laughs> Amen. My boy, we heard some preaching Monday night, didn't we? Those who went with us, I'm telling you, Brother Morton preached. Woo, he preached on this house. Amen. Psalms chapter 1. I'll read this and get this out of the way. Then I'll, I've got a lot of places to go to today. Blessed is the man. Who wants a blessing? Anybody here want the blessing of God? You want the blessing of God? Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree, and this tree is planted by the rivers of water. We talked last week about a palm tree that will flourish in the desert. Well, what about a tree planted by the rivers of water, where there's ample supply? Bring it forth his fruit in its season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Lord God, we're so thankful for your kindness and your goodness and your blessing. Oh, I appreciate you, Lord. Magnify your Father. God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Andy, get up here a little closer. 
I want to re- I want to read you the promise. Deuteronomy 28, Brother Tory. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. And then uh, uh, years ago, we had Brother, uh, y'all wouldn't know him, but it was Bishop Neelan Guthrie. He was a P.A.W. Bishop. And uh, uh, he'd preach at a sermon he is famous for. It was called Jailhouse Rock. From uh, uh, Paul and Silas down in jail, and he aimed for that service to go till midnight, because at midnight was when the uh, jail was shut. So it didn't matter what time you put him up; the service was going to go to midnight. That was part of the plan. So he had uh, 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 he had, so he was. Uh, uh, he came to uh, preach for me when I was in Kentucky. And, and all y'all know me, you know, I, I let a guy up pretty early. It wasn't P.A.W., you know, they, I don't know anybody been around P.A.W. much, but they're still coming in at 9 o'clock. You know, no matter what it's said on the door, that don't mean, it's like Roger Evans and, and, and Palm Beach, it may matter what the sign is on the door. Uh, uh, if it says 7.30, they may start at 8.30 or 9. That's how it is. Well, they'll have somebody start singing or something at a PAW church, but really they don't get in motion until about 9 o'clock. So that's what he was used to. Well, you know, we know how I am. You know, I don't keep a guy off the floor very long. So, man, he preached and preached and preached and preached, and uh, he was, you know, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to have Sister Guthrie come up here and give us some faith therapy. <laughs> and she got up for about 30 minutes or get him a little rest and told some testimonies of what God had done. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm doing Sister Guthrie's job. I'm giving y'all some faith therapy. I, I, that the word gospel means good news. Well, praise God. I believe in preaching judgment, and I do it. Y'all been here when I've done it. I believe in preaching judgment. I believe in preaching against sin. I believe in preaching holiness. I believe in preaching the end of the world. If it's in the Bible, I believe in preaching it. But I also believe in preaching the blessings of God. I heard a fellow one time, Preach about Jesus being the rose of Sharon. And he had done a, a study, I guess, and got talking about the th- how many thorns was on that stem. Big thorns, rough thorns, bad thorns, hard thorns, painful thorns. By the time he got through with the thorns, we weren't even interested in the rose. You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what the Lord can make a rose grow on a stem of spaghetti. <laughs> Woo! Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> so I ain't going to talk about the thorns today. I want to talk to you about the blessings of God. Let me read this to you. I, I hope you got your Bibles with you. Amen. Well, you can't see. Well, good. This lesson's for you then. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I'll read to you. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. If you don't believe this, if you don't believe this took place, if you could take a picture, you know the only green, only greenery that really grows in uh, Egypt and that, that's because they got to have all them, all that irrigation and stuff. All around it, it's just desert all around it. But if you could take a, a, a one of these Google pictures of all the nations round about and then take a picture 
of, 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 of Israel, it's, a, it's green and lush and plush. It's got some of the greatest fruits, some of the greatest vegetables, some of the greatest flowers. I'm glad I'm in the promised land. When God put you in the church, he put you in the promised land. I'm glad the economy's doing good. The lowest unemployment in 49 years. Wages going up. Praise God. Better for every class. I'm, I'm glad of that. And I'm, glad, I'm glad we got a president that's America first and everybody else second. Now, this ain't, this ain't a political speech. I'm glad of that. But it wouldn't matter who you had in there. God... God, God don't have to work by president. He is the king. He's the king of all the earth. He's the king of all the constellations. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you're his child. Glory to God. And all the blessings shall come upon thee. And overtake thee. Woo, my Lord. When you're driving down the road, you're looking in that rearview mirror. If you're not careful, you'll, you'll tear it off. Because yeah. even them blessing, oh, glory to God, them blessing that look like an 18-wheeler about ready to run over it. You need, to, you need to quit getting up in the morning and waiting for the next shoe to drop. Yeah. You need to quit getting up in the morning waiting for everything to get yes, worse. Yes. Well, I got lumbago in my right leg, and it's going down in my left leg. You need to get up and put your feet on the floor, and I claim the promises of God. Well, glory to God. If they lay off at the job, God's got a better job. Well, glory. We had, we had service right in here one night, and, and, and God was moving. And uh, Brother Dan, they shut this plant down. Shut this plant down. Uh, he, he's a praying man. He's got a praying wife. And servers are going here one night. Well, it wasn't me. I, not, well, I couldn't promise you nothing. If I promised you, I might not could keep it. I may promise, oh, I may promise, oh, Eddie here, I'll buy you a quarter pounder at McDonald's. We may get over there and all the quarter pounders may be out. Right. Amen. The stove could be broke. The roof could be caved in. But if God says you're going to get, if God says you're going to get a quarter pounder, I don't care if the whole place blows away. Maybe a quarter pounder on a table that's left there. Oh, praise God. But in the service one night, the Holy Ghost turned. He just used me. I wasn't nothing. I'm just a trumpet. Holy Ghost turned and told her not to worry about it. Amen. God was going to make, God's going to make a way and, and going to take care of Brother Dad. Right. Well, now, when you're, when you're this guy's age or Brother Joseph's age or Alex or Jason's age, well, you get laid off, you know. It, 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 it you know, it concern you. But, you know, they're young bucks. And they'll, they'll find something. But you get, when you, when you get that 50 mark, Folks ain't wanting to harm you. Well, praise God. But did God do it, Sister, Sister How? God did it. God did it. God blessed him. God opened the door. God, your blessing is not determined on nothing but your walk with God. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. These blessings shall overtake thee. And thou will hearken to that. That's the problem with folks. They don't listen to God. They don't walk with God. They don't walk in the Spirit. They don't live in the Spirit. They walk in doubt. They live in doubt. They're waiting for something bad to happen. Well, glory to God. Woo. Blessed be thou in the city. What if I just somewhere else? The economy's booming in Anchorage, Alaska. And if I was just in Anchorage, 
I'd get everything. You don't need to be in Anchorage, Alaska. You don't need to be in wherever the hot spot is in America. You, you go roaming all over the country hunting for the hot spot while the economy is booming. You'll never have nothing. But if you put your stakes down and say, God, amen, listen to him. Listen to what I'm reading here. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground. Blessed shall be the fruit of the cattle and of the increase of thy, uh, of thy kind and the flocks of the field. Well, that sounds like you'll be blessed anywhere. Woo! I had a fella, I had a fella, a pastor and a guy, a good guy, and, and uh, uh, faithful with his tithes. Amen. That's part of the covenant of God. You want God to be a partner, don't, don't be trying to embezzle God's money. Some of y'all are embezzlers. <laughs> you're embezzling. Amen. That's why, yeah, that's why you're, in, you're in God's jail. <laughs> you're in God's jail because you're an embezzler. You quit embezzling God's money and God will get you out of jail. But this young man, this young man, he paid his tithes. He gave his offering. He is very faithful to the church. And things just did not, did not, you know. I don't get in everybody's business. I guess y'all know that by now. I ain't want to know all your business. Yeah, you mind your business, I'll mind my business, and we'll do God's business. How does that sound? So I don't get it. Now, you ask me for advice, I'll give it. You don't have to take it, but I, I'll, I'll give it. I ain't going to fall out with a heart attack if you don't take it. But I won't say it, but if it don't, it, in my heart I'll say, well, I told you so. I won't say it to you to add pain to your already, but I'll say, oh, I told you. So this young man comes to me and said, Brother Epley, I'm faithful. I pay my tithes. I give my offerings. What's wrong? You really won't know what's wrong with her. You got to get up and go work. You can't out get working. <laughs> you got to get up in the morning. Said if you regard, he that regards the wind and the rain and don't sow, well, they won't reap at harvest time. Well, praise God. I'm glad I'm preaching to a working church. I'm going to tell you, God hates laziness. If you're lazy, if you're lazy, you're always going to be without. I don't care if you put your tithing envelope in there. God bless the works of your hands. If there ain't no work in your hands, God can't bless it. Well, let's move on. I'm like, I'm like the old black preacher. The old black preacher read two chapters every time he preached. And somebody said, well, Elder, why do you read so many chapters when you preach? He said, well, when they persecute me on one point, I flee to another. So that's what I'm doing. Blessed be thy basket and thy store. Blessed be when thou comest in. Blessed be thou when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways. Praise God. Just as a testimony, not gloating, not rejoicing, not happy. In fact, I'm sad. But I was sitting right here, right here on this, on this altar praying. I was sitting right here praying. And there's some folks really, really, really done me wrong. I, they done me wrong. And really they done their best to, de, to destroy me, destroy my influence. And I'm, I, I'm sitting here praying. And the Lord spoke to me this scripture. It said, the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. And the house of David grew stronger and stronger. And the scripture come to me, 
I'm going to put them in disarray. Well, I didn't rejoice in that. But I did thank the Lord that he gave me that promise. And won't really nobody know this but my wife, but my wife knows. All of them, all of them, they look like they, look like they were so on top and I was so on the bottom. But all of them, it went, all of them, it went. I mean, every one of their churches, but I'm not rejoicing. I prayed for them. None of them, none of them, without exception, has the same crowd, the same ministry, the same anything they did. You know, God told Abraham, I'll bless them that bless you, and I'll curse them that curse you. That's what God said. I'm not saying this by boasting. I'm saying this with humbleness with my hands in the air. Here I am, 68 years old. Really, probably should be thinking about retiring. You know what we're doing? We're building a church on this hill. And I'm building a house out on that road. I'm going to tell you, you, you get right with God. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. You get right with God. Amen. And God to show everybody. <laughs> woo! God to show everybody. You can't, you can't put down what I put up. That's right. Amen. That's the truth. Yes, sir. That's right. Not because I'm so good. But because he's faithful to his word. So they'll come against you one way. Some of y'all need to lay hold of this promise right here. Folks, it's working against you. They'll come before you one way. Flee seven ways. The Lord shall come out. Well, I don't even know what I'm even going to get to my main scripture. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee, thy storehouse. Yes. Just pick that up, Brother Andy. Well, glory to God. Where am I at there? Yeah, read it. Back up. Get that whole verse. Yes. Hi, right, boys. Come here. Come here, boys. Come here. All you guys. My front row guy. Yeah, come on here. Sit down here. Come here. Yeah. Scoot around. Here. Let's, let's set this up. Lord of God. Come on. Scoot on down, boys. Got to make room for Deacon Eddie here. Praise God. Amen. I'm preaching to you boys today. I'm going to tell you boys. You don't have to settle for less. You don't have to settle for the mundane. You don't have to settle with barely getting by. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm trying to give you some faith today. Well, I'm reaping what I sow. And when you get through picking into the row, don't sow no more. We got farmers in here. I'm not much of a farmer. We got folks have gardens and stuff in here. Everybody does garden. Oh, Brother Spartan does a big garden. Everybody does gardens. Raise your hands. You do, you do gardens. You do. Look, we got a slew of people. But I mean, they're gardening folks. Well, I'm going to tell you what. One day when you go out there, you're going to pick the last mater. And you're going to pick the last, dig the last tater. Well, glory to God. You're going to pick the last pepper. And the last onion. Huh? Well, when you get through picking that, don't sow no more. <laughs> Woo! That's a problem with some of you. You put in a fresh crop. Then you got to sow that. Well, let's hold there. Brother Dallas would flip over there. Give me, what is it? Galatians 6 and 7. Is that it? I think that's it. Faith. 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 Faith will work for you girls. Get you a good husband. Makes lots of money. 
Put you in a decent house. Put you in a decent car besides a rattle trap. Well, praise the Lord. I'm trying to, I'm, oh, glory to God. Right? Amen. That's, there's one of them fellas teasing me down there. Ain't you a little old to be building that church? I said, yeah, I am. I tell the truth. I said, but looky. Bernie Sanders running for president. He's 78. And he's crazy as a loon. I mean, he looked like somebody. He looked like somebody that escaped from the asylum. Just a picture of him. If, if he's out wandering, if he's out by himself wandering the street, somebody would, they call you out in white coats. Then if he opened his mouth, you know he's crazy. I mean, he thinks Venezuela is the best place in the world, and, and they ain't even got food to eat. Then the next guy is 76. That's old uh, Biden. He done lost twice. Run again, going to lose again. Thank the Lord. Amen. Then you got Donald Trump. He's 72. I'm feeling younger all the time. Praise God. I'm a young 68. <laughs> May not feel that way in the morning. <laughs> Oh, well, who got it? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not yes. Man yes. Man yes. And that's as far as folks go. Well, I'm reaping what I sowed when I was 15. Well, get picked in another row. You don't have to reap it for 40 years. Pick the end of the roll and don't sow no more. But the, the, the passage don't stop there. What does it say? Hey! Sow and don't just reap when you do bad. Sow and reap when you do good. When you're praying, you're sowing. When you're worshiping, you're sowing. When you're living right, you're sowing. When you're coming to church and you don't feel good, you're sowing. Well, glory to God. When things ain't going good, you're still raising your hand and you're glorifying God, you're sowing. And if you sow, you're going to reap. Woo! Glory to God. Quit sowing to the flesh and start sowing to the spirit. You get the end of that rope picked. Whew. Anybody ever pick cotton? My, my, my wife, when she was a girl, she picked cotton. I know my mother-in-law picked cotton. And my sister-in-law, sister, yeah, sister cotton from down in cotton. She picked so much, they even named them cotton. Amen. Brother Murphy, your sister Murphy picked any cotton? Pick any cotton? How do you escape that down there in that part of Arkansas? You, <laughs> Sister Murphy, do you pick any cotton? Chop. Sister Langston? Yeah, them folks down there in that part of Arkansas and the boot hill of Missouri, right. they, they didn't pick cotton they didn't eat. <laughs> and then they wasn't eating good, huh? <laughs> Woo. But boy, that's, that's very tiring work. Unless it grows real good. That's why old Brother Smart saying, I feel like I'm walking in tall cotton. You ain't got to get on your knees to pick it. You can pick it standing up. Well, glory. Well, when you get through picking that end of that cotton roll, don't plant no more. Quit cheating. Quit lying. Quit flirting. Quit sowing to your flesh. Quit, quit living in the world. Instead of sowing that, Read your Bible. Pray. Come to church. Worship God. You, that's better to sow. Woo, just so happy. Pick some joy. Pick some peace. Pick some love. Pick some gentleness. Pick some goodness. Well, glory to God. Pick some hope. Pick some help. Glory. You hearing it, Jacob? I'm going to preach you out of that hole. 
where God's going to put you in, bless you, run you over with blessings. You hear me, Bradley? I'm knocking that bad luck off of you today. I'm preaching you some faith. We're going to rise up. Get up off of that defeated deal. It's not God's will for you to be defeated. It's not God's will for you to go down. It's not God's will for you to do without. It's not God's will for you to be depressed. It's not God's will for you to be tormented. It's not God's will for you to hang around the house sad all the time. That's not God's will. God's will is for you to have peace and joy. You hearing me, Sister Rhonda? I'm preaching that bad luck off of your house. All right, go. Hallelujah. I'm going to. You need to get around there. I'll start kicking all that out the door. Somebody start talking negativism to you. You say, shut your mouth. Shut, shut, shut. God going to hear it. Yes. I don't want that lodging in my spirit. I don't want that lodging in my heart. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you'll eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Solomon said, you're snared by the words of your own mouth. You go around all day. Oh me. Oh my. Oh me. Oh my. The washer's not going to work. The dryer's not going to work. Well, praise God. Some of you turn your car on waiting, for, waiting to hear something. That's the motor. That's the transmission. You have faith, you just got it in reverse. Some of you just hear the flus in the neighborhood and you go to, your, to the bed and dope yourself up and pull your cover up waiting for it to hit you. Well, praise the Lord. I'm sick of all this flu. Tell the flu to fly. Get out of here, flu. I've been a little worried. They got this measles epidemic here and there from all them, all, from all them illegals that got across the border there and spreading. I, I just know some of y'all going to come down with it. Because you're just so ready to catch anything. Here I am. Ain't nobody had TB in 50 years. Here I am. <laughs> Glory to God. Some of you get up and read the paper. First thing you read is obituary column. See if your name's there. Eat 14 tacos and 22 burritos and refried beans and rice and you feel something in your chest. I'm having a heart attack. That's gas. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with your heart. You need to eat some egg slats. And get a good cleaning out, praise God. And you won't be sick as a dog. Well, that's funny, but God knows it's the truth. I'm a dying, I'm a dying. If we knocked you in the head, it wouldn't kill you. You're going to stay here just to torment me, praise God. I'm making a little humorous because I'm giving you some anesthetic <laughs> while I'm operating. <laughs> if I didn't do some of that, this operation would be too hard for you to, for you to bear. Come on. That's good. Oh, okay. Back to where we're at. All right. Glory. Yes. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee. 
in thy storehouse. Yes? You know what? I'm reading your old doubting, unbelieving mind. You're like that captain of the king of Assyria. Or Syria. Prophet of God said, Tomorrow! They're selling doves, dung. I forget how much. Way up, I think $16 and a half in the city. I mean, they've ate everything. They ain't got nothing to eat. And this old crazy preacher like this old goofy guy that's up here now. Tomorrow, about this time, there's going to be more than you can eat. They're dying. The old captain said who leaned his hand against the wall. He's probably hungry as hell. I suppose, I suppose. Give me, somebody flipped to Malachi 3 and 10, I think. I suppose if there were windows in heaven, this thing could be. You know what the prophet said? The prophet said, it's going to be big, buddy. Just like I said. It's going to be, but you ain't going to see it. I ain't for God to be telling that to me. I'm going to pour out this blessing, but you know, you know what happened? The old goofy guy stood in the gate, and they ran over the top of him. You know, you know what all, well, you know, all God had to do to have, make that happen? Four lepers. Some of y'all waiting for a new car plant, and all God needs is four lepers. Some of y'all waiting for Congress to pass some law. And all God needs is four leopards. God likes to do it where folks shake their head. Can nobody get this done but God? What is it? Well, who's got that Malachi? What does it say? Huh? Yes. Yes. This is the only time in Scripture. Prove me now. Yes? That the Lord of hosts. Yes, yes. If I will not open you. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. John Boyer, give me one in tithing and, and offer an envelope. Hand, hand it up there. Come on, move it. Get it. Up, 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 up. Well, you ain't going to win no Kentucky Derby. I'm going to tell you that right now. The winner didn't win because he cheated. Thank you. Some folks, when they pay their tithe, it's like this. There goes my new boat. There goes my new shoes. There goes my room edition. I paid my tithe and nothing happened. Well, you know, God not only sees what you give, God sees how you give. <laughs> but he said, you bring your tithes and your offerings in the storehouse. That's where you're getting fed at. You don't you come to church here and send your tithes off to Reverend Osteen. Or T.D. Jakes is sweating like a hog. Praise God. Amen. But you bring it into the storehouse that there'll be meat in my house. What is it? You don't buy, you don't pick up your groceries at Kroger's and go down and pay for it at, at, at IGA. We got Kroger's or IGA here, but you don't pick them up at Walmart and go down and pay the price cutter. What does it say? That there may be meat in my house. Yes. Yes? There is windows in heaven. No captains said, well, I suppose if there are windows, well, there is windows in heaven. And look at what it says. 
and pour you out a blessing? Hey, I got to make an extension on, on this storehouse room. Woo, praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Lord kind of stirred me up the other day. We're building this building. It'll seat about 100 more than what we're seating now, so we're not overbuilding. But, you know, I, 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 I've got that mindset. But you know what? Praise God. You got to do some things in faith. And it hit my mind. We got to make this place bigger because we got to make room for your backslid kids and grandkids and husbands, family members. Hey, glory to God. Sinner folk, drug heads, alcoholics. Woo! Folks, his lives are in a mess. He'll pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive it. Amen. You just got to be sensitive to God's plan. Well, glory to God. If you think little, it'll always be little. But you got to enlarge that. Got to enlarge that. Glory to God. Well, God is good. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get where I'm going. I, but it'll, don't get me wrong. You know, now if the people gathered up manna and left it over the next day, it bred worms. But the priests gathered up that manna and they put it in the Ark of the Covenant, and it stayed fresh. Well, glory to God. Woo. Praise the Lord, Brother Kenny. We're so glad to have you. Glad to have my brother-in-law and sister-in-law with us. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you. Amen. Bless old Greg. Yes. He's going to hang around here. We're going to make a whole row around him. Yes. Take care. Yes. He'll wind up getting that good Holy Ghost. Yes. He don't understand it all now. But I'm glad you don't have to understand it. I think my mother-in-law told me she'd had the Holy Ghost 67 years. Ain't that right, Sister Wanda? 67 years. Well, she don't, she's been in church 67 years. She don't understand all about the Holy Ghost. I've been preaching over 50 years. I don't understand all about the Holy Ghost. It's eternal, not temporal. It's infinite, not finite. So you don't have to understand all about it. He knows all about you. Woo! Where are we at, Brother Andy? Yeah, where you stopped at? Yes. 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 Now here's the deal. Here's the deal breaker. You can't do your own thing and get the blessings of God. You can't not walk right and get the blessings of God. Hold right there. I'm going to go to my scripture of the red. Somebody pick up Psalms 1. Psalms 1 and 1. I'll get some of this in here while I'm working. Y'all boys doing all right? Yes, sir. Man, I'm glad to have you boys home. Yes, sir. I tell you, I'm glad to have you home. Amen. Lord, y'all I wind up being doctors or lawyers or something. Paying me big tithing checks. <laughs> Boy, I'd, I'll be happy. Praise God. I say, Lord, let them make more. Hallelujah. I pray for all y'all make more. More y'all make, more I make. That might be a selfish prayer, but it, it works. I pray, bless them, Lord. <laughs> God's good. All, All right, where are we at? Who's got what, where, when? I'm going to tell you what, it pays who you listen to. I never could get them, I forget. They were sisters, so I never could get them straight. But there was Ann Landers and Abby Van Buren. They both had advice columns. 
in the paper years ago. You have to be pretty old. Any old geezers remember Ann Landon? Well, oh, well, there's several old geezers around here. Good. And the old crazy, demented women would, call, would write in there asking one of them uh, about marriage advice. Well, one of them had been married five times. That's not who I'd want to get any marriage advice from. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And, and so you've got to be careful who you get your counsel from. Right. Walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Is this godly counsel? You discouraged, you talked to some backslider. I'll tell you what I've done. That church done me so wrong. I backslid. And I'm doing better off. I'm drinking Johnny Walker Red, Old Crow, Kentucky Bourbon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Smoking pot and snorting cocaine, marijuana, oxycodone, praise God. I, I, be like me. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Or can you imagine to go go somebody that's had a terrible record financially? They're about to get evicted out of their house. They done pulled their car off. And you go get a financial advice from them. You would have to be nuts. That's right. That's right. Well, if I was going to get counsel, I'd try to get counsel from somebody that was godly. That's right. Well, glory to God. Blessed is a man. You won't be blessed? And you don't get your advice or your counsel from ungodly. And what? You don't walk the way sinners walk. If you if you're going to live like a sinner, you're not going to get the ble- you're not going to get the full extent of the blessings of God. You may get some, but you're not going to get the full extent of the blessings of God if you're not going to walk right. It catch up with you. Well, praise God. Yes. Yes. If you're looking, if you're a fault finder, and you're a gossiper. You always got something bad to say about everybody. You're going to curtail the blessings of God in your home. Well, glory to God. You got enough. Taking care of yourself. That's right. All that that you're saying about your neighbor. What if all that was being said about you? There's no one in this house that don't have unpleasant things could be said about them. Either in their past or now. Right. Or both. Right. Yes, sir. So for you to sit around, chew. Yep, 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 yep. Some folks, they live a critical life. It's too cold in the winter. I'd be glad when this gets over. It's too cold. Well, you ain't living in Florida, honey. You're in Missouri. We have cold weather in Missouri. We have snow in Missouri. We have ice in Missouri. If you want to move where it's warm all the time, move to Florida. And let the hair, you hear you snow, you shovel the snow off of your housetop. Down there, you chase your house, huh? <laughs> That's right. Well, praise God. I was in California. Yeah, if you was in California, your taxes would be twice as high as it is now. You'd be paying five dollars and some odd for for a tank for for a gallon of gas. Well, praise the Lord. Will they tax you up the hill? Where anybody's got any sense, they're they're bailing out of there. Well, ain't no fun laying on the beach, amen, if you're having to dig your groceries out of a garbage can. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm glad I'm here. Yes, I ought to be content where I'm at. Yes, right. That's right. 
Man, everybody that comes and visits us. Oh, brother, brother Bones said, I believe this is the most beautiful country that I've ever had. Everybody comes by here. Brother Rice Singer, when he is here, him and his wife spent all their time on the road driving all these country roads out. Because they ain't hardly anywhere as pretty as the foothills of the old arch. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. What did that have to do with anything? Well, I just, I just gave you that for free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm out. I sat in my, I sat at my uh, kitchen table drinking some tea or well, a little bit of coffee I drank. I drank community dark roast. Thank you. Praise God. And, I, and I, I'm there drinking that, and I'm looking out that window. My friend from Texas, Brother uh, Justin Jackson, he come up all the way here to Kansas to do some uh, duck hunting. And he's got I mean, turkey, turkey. And he got them turkeys in his office. I mean, boy, he's right proud of them. There's two of them there in his office. So I'm there one morning in the kitchen, and I'm drinking some tea. And I look out my window, and there's four turkeys in my backyard. I immediately call him on the phone. I said, Brother Jackson, yeah, you know those turkeys you got in your office? I said, yeah, I got four in my yard, and the least one's bigger than one you got in your office. I said, but they know they're safe here. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Praise Lord. They, they went all the way up here. They went all the way up here north of Kansas City to, to hunt. They went up there to deer hunt. I don't guess there's no deer in Texas. I don't know. But they went up there north of Kansas City to, to deer hunt, and they got a big old deer there. Now listen to this, Anthony. You need to hear this. Praise God. They went all the way up there to deer, to deer hunt. And I... I and the same thing, two or three, it was the same week. Two, I look out there in my, in my backyard. Lord, I, I will not tell that. I'll all get shot. Well, I don't know how, I don't know how good a shot some of y'all are. I know Andy and Brian ain't very good because they don't ever bring nothing home. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So, Amen. I ain't never hunted, and I do good as him, praise God. <laughs> Amy, you might ought to check on him, on that on them deer, praise God. But, I, I, but, I, but I'm but walking out there in my kitchen, and honest to God, there's four does and a big buck. I mean, he has humongous, you know. Brother Jackson, yeah. You know how you paid all that money, went up there near to the Iowa to hunt them deer, yeah. So I'm standing in my kitchen, and there's four does you wouldn't want, but they're the big old guy. He's got a massive head. Of course, the spirit of evangelism come on me, and I may have. <laughs> old Brother Atkins, he was a, he was a preacher friend of ours, and he was, he was telling the older Brother Kevin, as he went out fishing. He said, and that fish was that big. And the elder said, now, Brother Atkins, if the Lord was coming right now, how big would that fish be? <laughs> but I, well, praise the Lord. What did that have to do with anything I was talking about? Read. Yeah, and in his law does he be, yeah, let's get the rest of that. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And it's his law. Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, he ain't worried about the NFL. <laughs> or who, who's this bunch that's up here in St. Louis that plays ball? Don't act like you don't know. Who is it? Cardinals. Uh, pray for my God in Jesus' name. <laughs> his delight ain't in the Cardinals. Or the Chiefs, or Tiger Woods. <laughs> or whatever. But his, uh, oh, you know, no, I ain't going to touch that at all. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. When's the last time during the day you opened up your Bible and read it? I love to read. I don't read as much now as I used to. Now I listen to an audio. That's a lazy way to do it. 
And 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 I enjoy I enjoy that. I enjoy that. I probably don't I don't know if there's any readers here, but you know what? Yeah, I just I, I I enjoy that. Boy, I, I was I was married. I I married at 24. So y'all folks, hey, there's still time for you. Praise God. Don't worry, for every old shoe, there's an old sock. You just hold the faith. Amen. You, you stay true to God, right with God, and God will send you somebody. Wait on the Lord. Amen. 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 But, but, uh, 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 but, boy, if you'd, if you'd open those promises, open those promises. Time out, just a minute. Time out. Time out. Do you know why Donald Trump is filling these coliseums up? Old Joe Biden had a deal up there. He's from Pennsylvania. Had a deal up there. You know how many people he had? 600 people. 600 folks. That Beto's out there had 120 people. And you got to stand in line for hours to get in Trump's rally. Do, do you know why? He ain't talking doom and gloom. Who wants to hear doom and gloom? You don't want to hear some, it's going to get better. Make America great again. Make the church great again. Make your life great again. Make your home great again. Make your job great again. Yeah, give, give me the next verse, Brother Cotton, then I got to go. Boy, I, the, the class is done coming up here, and I ain't even got to where I was going. But it'll hold, I'll get you another time. I'm doing some faith therapy. Yes, are you get, are you getting any faith? Yes, sir. Just helping you out. I think so. Oh, you he thinks so. Boy, I don't lie, Lord. What about you? It, it straightened me out. Yes. Sir. Okay. He just thinks he's getting a little bit of help. Will you help him after service? Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. All Thank right. You straighten him up, but he's yeah, okay. Go ahead. Where? Are you? Hey, read. Hey. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Look, you're going to have seasons. You're going to have winter where it looks like everything's dead. You're going to have fall where it looks like everything is dying. But when you get through fall and you get through winter, spring is on the way. We've had a long winter. It ain't hardly had no spring. But spring is on the way. Woo! Look out here, folks. The sun is shining. It ain't always going to rain. Sun is shining. And after spring comes summer. Woo! That's when you go out there and you pick them big old red maters. Forsake not the Levite. Praise the God. And them cucumbers and onions and watermelons. Glory to God. And somebody plant some okra. Amen. So you may be in a winter season in your life. That everything looks dead. It ain't dead. It's just waiting to grow again. Amen. Yes, what does it say, Brother Cotton? Also shall not Woo! I think if you preach about backsliding all the time, you got to preach about it sometimes. You got to preach about it sometimes. But I think if you preach about backsliding all the time, you may give weak folks an idea. I worry. I really ought not say this. I'm going to say it, but I really ought not say it. I worry about men that preach and all the time they're preaching about adultery and fornication. I'm wondering what's going on in their head. Now you got to say something about it. It's in the Bible. You got to preach it. It's in the Bible. But if that if that's the theme of your message, yes, 
sin's going to abound. Yes. Bible says it is. But you don't need to stop at that part of the verse. Right. Say, where sin doth abound, grace, grace does much more abound. Yeah. Well, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, what does it say? God wants to, I'm here to tell you, I'm trying to convince you, and you arguing with me. God wants to bless you. Well, what's going on? I don't care what's going on in your life right now. You can't plow straight roads looking backwards. Now, if y'all folks think I do bad driving forward, y'all will see me trying to drive backwards. That's an experience. You don't need no ride down there at Branson to get your thrill. You just be with me when I'm trying to back up. You know? Because really the car's not made to go backwards. It's just made to go backwards when you have to. It's made to go forward. God wants you going forward. Woo! I'm trying to load this down on you today. Eternal God, I've talked faith to your people today. I've told them what you want to do for them. God, I know you're not going to do that for the unfaithful. You're not going to do that for those that's dilatory. You're not going to do that with folks that want to sin on the side. But oh God, you want to bless your people. <laughs> you want to bless your people. It's your will to bless your people. God, I pray that faith will come alive in somebody's heart in this service. Today, hope will spring alive. And they'll leave this service today reaching for the blessings of God. Reaching for better. Reaching for the best. Oh, God, help them to be the best they can be in their home, in their jobs, most of all in their spiritual lives. God, I know the man of God said he would above all. We had prospered me in health, even as our soul prospered. Prosper my soul, God, where I can see all these other blessings coming my way. Jesus' name we pray.